Good morning. Well, it's the last day. Uh, I had the CNC running yesterday. Being an old guy, I had a great problem uh, interpreting the motion that I needed it to do. My little CNC that I do the engraving with is a gantry CNC, which means the, the cutter head travels. And so I wasted three or four hours scratching my head, not having any luck with home positions and what have you until I realized, well, yeah, the gantry moves, but the cutter uh, can be interpreted as being in a fixed place because I work off a of center. So as soon as I sent the home position as dead center underneath the spindle uh, on the Z axis, Everything fell into place. Uh, none of my patterns, cut programs for the small CNC will run on this one uh, without me loading each one, editing the G code. So I just started making new ones. So I'll get in a different location and show what I've built so far. So this is my workstation. Uh, it's a Dell computer, monitors, keyboard, mouse, whatever you gotta have. Uh, and on this computer I have my CAMBAM program, which is a CAM program which really makes it a lot nicer. I was a young guy at that time. Uh, uh, new camera. So anyway, the control panel I showed it earlier uh, and on the front of it I have my power on off selector switch and then I have my um, start stop for the automatic which when I push the stop there is no power to any of the uh, power supplies for the drives or for the uh, controls now the one thing I did have to change is I just fought the z-axis the up and the down it was erratic and, and just not behaving. I got sick of trying to tune it. And uh, come to find out the little cog belt pulley on the motor was slipping. And it caused the motor to run erratic. Uh, I had to change it from the 4 to 1 ratio to a 2 to 1 ratio to get enough set screw grip to lock it down and boy I mean it just smoothed right out so the other drives are uh, I was able to keep the hand wheels on them so I can run this in more or less of a manual or I can do it manual if I need to automatic but once once the Mach 3 software has locked in uh, the positions you don't want to turn the axis manually because it still thinks it where it was so homing is a ritual I do uh, the first cut so I will open the door on the cabinet and you can see the finished result there so the cabinet got neatened up a little bit uh, the axis drives power supplies uh, there's the 5 volt DC there's the UC100 and the control board and the master control relay uh, I'll go ahead and get the software up and running and we'll make this little sucker move a little bit okay I have the the Mach 3 software up and running uh, I don't need to use CAMBAM because uh, I converted for the standard mold blanks that I used I, I made cut patterns for uh, three or four of the common molds that 
I use and that I need to make as soon as I get this machine back online. So I have uh, centered a or put a piece of stock in the vise and I'm going to go ahead and, and set the home on it. Normally I would take that cutter out and put a, a, a pointed cutter in there to get it a little more exact but and this is just to, to show the motion so I'll back up. Now the nice thing about using a, a wireless keyboard is I can just take my keyboard and hold it in my hand reset Mach 3 let's see give it a little up okay and I, I've got the slow speed set a little bit slow so go down this over not close that's pretty close and I'm off just a hair from yesterday uh, Get around on that. So right now, my X, which is the top, the 2.9450, and the Y, the minus 61250, I'm going to set those as the home position, which means zero. When it's right there, it is in at zero point so anytime I, I put a new mold in there and start the cut program everything will return and hit that exact same center point all my molds I make off of the center point of the object being cut in the graphite so I'm gonna zero those out take the mouse get out of the way just hit the zero zero and now I'm going to have to zero the z-axis to tell it where the tip of the cutter is so I'll end up blocking the camera to do that so I'm just going to rotate over and I'll try and stay out of the way while I zero it. I mean I'm not a machinist. I, I don't know. There's probably a lot of easier ways to do this but with having the jog set so slow I can jog right down uh, reasonably close to that so I just take my keyboard I set it over here and I just take a double thick piece of paper Okay, just pinched it. There's no sense going any further. So I'm going to set the zero point on the z-axis just like I did the x and the y. So now it's sitting at plus zero zero zero. Okay, so now it's sitting at plus ten point eight. So it technically the machine is is ready to go uh, and it's ready to cut a mold so let me uh, load up one of the cut patterns for this size of stock uh, I've got little pieces of tape over the backs of the motors the shafts are open and I don't want to get graphite in so I'm gonna hand use my vacuum system right now uh, where it will mount to the cutter when the machine is actually producing and uh, will keep the graphite sucked up but no matter what I do it's going to get all over the place so I'm going to pause again 
Okay, I've got the cut pattern set up on Mach 3. This is going to be a, a two ounce mold, I think. It's the one that I put the happy faces and the uh, pot leaves and skull and crossbones and whatever's in. Uh, I haven't done any engraving with this yet. I'll probably do all the engraving on the small machine. But anyway, I will zoom over here down a little bit and let me back out and a little and you can see a little more of the travel so that's gonna get noisy so I'm just gonna shut up while it, it cuts this mold system I would have hand cranked every millimeter of that motion uh, now I cut slow for one I'm in a learning curve with this machine and two uh, I can cut a lot faster and so what I'll do is I'll put another one in and then just manually bounce the speed up so uh, I'll zoom out and show you that mold. Nice little mold. No hand cranking. How wonderful. Anyway, I'm on pause. I'm going to use the manual override on the speed and I'll put this up to, to what its normal uh, cut speed will be.
that's a little more like it. Uh, so the the whole part of this wasn't to uh, get it faster. It was the fact that I didn't sit there and hand crank every bit of that motion. Uh, when I do my three mold sets, I make 140, 160 molds at a time in a morning and uh, that's a lot of hand cranking and then when I make the the two-part molds I have to surface one side of every one of them and that is a bunch of hand cranking to where this one it will just surface it now I will also make the new cut patterns to where it's gonna run the cross slide all the way up and over so it's as far away from the spindle as it needs to be to change the block but as it is now I always shut the the spindle motor off while I do it so anyway that's my CNC project uh, I'm tickled with it. it it works good it's not rocket science but uh, I've got more to do I gotta put the lights in it the fans coming I got two filters up on top that are mounted down to the cabinet and a grill work through there so it will pull fresh air in and then keep a positive pressure inside the cabinet which should hopefully keep the graphite out which is uh, next to impossible so anyway that was my project and I don't know what the heck I'm gonna do next so enough for today bye bye